Lord, we come to this time to celebrate and proclaim your death. We just got done singing about what you accomplished on the cross. I pray as we take these elements, as we proclaim your death here and now, Jesus, that you would just be magnified, that you would be glorified. And it is always in your name we pray. Amen. I'm excited to share that we are now officially doing communion, returning to our normal practice of celebrating communion every week. And this time, this is the time that we get to remember that Jesus' body was given and that his blood was shed for the forgiveness of sins. We get to proclaim the Lord's death. Please go ahead and open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, we're going to be in verses 9 and 10. 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And as we prepare our hearts, I want to ask a question. How do you define love? How do you define love? Our passage is going to reveal to us what true love really is. Please follow along as I read 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Here in these verses, the Apostle John is speaking specifically to believers. By this, the love of God was manifested in, this, in us. By this, the love of God was revealed in believers, to believers. Believers were involved as the recipients of God's revealed love. How was this love, how was God's love revealed? Continuing on in verse 9, it was revealed that God has sent his only begotten son into the world. God the Father sent Jesus into the world so that believers might live through him, so that believers would have spiritual life through Christ. And in verse 10, it says, in this is love. In verse 10, we're going to be told what love truly is. God's going to provide a striking contrast to show the stunning depth of his love. He says, in this is love, not that we loved God. Believers previously had no love for God. God was not the object of their love. Jesus said that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Failing this commandment is the very definition of rebellion. Before believers were saved, they loved anything but God. All of us here today are sinners. We've all sinned in our actions, in our words, and in our thoughts. And we didn't just do it once. We do it over and over, day after day, hour after hour. What should God do with such sinners? God's holy justice demands punishment for sin. Punishment for this rebellion. And transgressing an infinitely holy God requires an infinite punishment. And that's what we call hell. Sinners being rightly punished and suffering under God's holy wrath forever. 
a suffering that will never end. If you're here today and you would admit by your own admission that you're not a believer, that you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, and that you do not love him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, then this is not a time for you to participate in taking the bread and the cup. But this is a time for you to consider your eternity, to, to consider what is coming, to consider what God's love for believers looks like. Consider these things. Turn and repent Repent from your sins. Repent from following after your own self-interest and follow Christ. Believers, I have some really good news for you. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but he loved us. We, believers, we are and were the object of his love. How can this be? There's nothing lovable in us or about us. And yet, he loved us. It was quite the opposite, actually. Not only was there nothing lovable in us and about us, we were living in defiance of him. We were rebelling against him, and yet, he loved us us and he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins God the father willingly and purposefully sent Jesus to die in our place we're the sinners we deserve to die we deserve to suffer but God's love was so poured out on us that Jesus became the propitiation, the wrath-satisfying sacrifice for our sins. Jesus bore the penalty for the sins that we committed. He suffered and died in our place. And by doing so, he alone satisfied and extinguished the wrath of God that was due our sins. Praise God for his mercy. Praise God for his grace. And praise God for his amazing love. When your hearts are prepared, go ahead and take communion on your own. Men, please serve us.